Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct Views of Memorial Day edition. Oddly, sort of. Yeah, I know, it's four o'clock in the morning, so technically I'm four hours behind. But uh, when you work midnight, it's your Mondays come Tuesday morning. I don't know how many people want to hear me. In honor of Memorial Day, though, I would like to play a little bit of uh, patriotic music. That'd be Megadeth, for those of you that don't know the band. Uh, you should. Uh, Nick Menza has recently died, the greatest drummer possibly in thrash. And I thought it was very important to uh, remember. We play this. You know, only five percent of the country does anything patriotic. On uh, all right, sorry, Nick Menza. If I don't shut you off, they will shut my video down. Um, rest in peace, Nick Menza. I'll get to more of that Saturday. Um, how many of you did anything patriotic for Memorial Day? You know, only five percent of the people did. Me, I didn't do anything great. I after my band practice, I had to work Memorial Day. So, um, after band practice at like two in the morning, we went to a 24 hour grocery store, got food and fired up the grill and watched the sun come up on Memorial Day. There's like five of us out there, six of us. Um, did you do something Memorial Day? Let me know. I'm not going to keep talking about it because then I try to share the video and it's not Memorial Day and everybody thinks it's dated. Relax. It isn't. Um, this is the hill.com, a former NSA head. Uh, he's talking about Trump. He's feeding the recruitment devices. Now that's interesting because if it wasn't for Donald Trump, ISIS would not be recruiting people. I love that. I also love the line that ISIS exists specifically because they hate Israel. Does that explain why they bombed Paris? Does that explain why they bombed Belgium? Okay, they're friends of Israel. Okay, does that explain why they bomb other Muslims who are not friends of Israel? No, it doesn't explain it. Why? Because that's not what's causing it. However, that's not the most interesting part of what he says here. As we go into the end of Memorial Day, and since many people probably forgot Memorial Day, it's fine. Um, Listen to this. This is what Hayden said when he was asked about um, privacy regarding uh, what you do online. Listen to this real close. Maybe it should have got the dumb the other day. Your habits are all geared to protecting privacy against the government because that has always been the traditional threat. That is no longer the pattern. It is the private sector. We are going through a cultural adjustment. Now, don't just gloss over that. Do you understand what this bonehead just said? He just told you that it used to be that you had to be afraid of government overreach. But that's not the case anymore. There's a cultural shift, and government is now your friend. The enemy is the private sector. Do you understand what a gross inversion of facts that is? That is an affront on everything that we should be cherishing as a country today. So um, that needed to be looked at. I also want to get into the Second Amendment today. I have not done a Second Amendment update in quite some time. Um, brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. If you haven't checked out Sticker Junkie by now, please make sure you do. Um, if, you want to, if you want to help me out like Sticker Junkie does, I do have a pan, uh, Patreon account. And before we get into our gun update, this is something new I've done. I've had people that have wanted to support me. And the best way to do that is to get a hold of me on the correct views at hotmail.com because then there's not a third party taking part of your donations. But uh, some people like to do it in the more official way. So uh, as you can see from screen share, go to Patreon. The link is in my description. You can help me a lot by uh, donating that way if you wish. Uh, on to the gun update here. 11 year old boy shoots a home intruder. He started crying like a little baby. Now, this I thought was interesting because you've got all these people out here talking about how guns, guns kill children, guns lead to the death of children, blah, 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 blah. lefty whiny drivel inserted 
here. Well, an Alabama boy, this is uh, Alan Salazar, Prison Planet, is being praised after using a firearm to ward off a home invader. Alone at his uh, Talladega home Wednesday morning, Chris Gaither, 11, says he retrieved a knife and then his stepdad's 9mm pistol after his dog alerted him to the break-in. Now, notice when you raise a child to respect a gun, when he suspected that there could be a problem, he went for the knife. Not all instances revolve, revolve around you pulling a revolver on someone. Okay. So he got that right. Um, kids don't know how to handle guns. This, this boy did brilliantly. Um, I seen the guy and I warned him four times to get out. And then he ran upstairs, Chris said. And he came back down with a 38 in his hand. The young boy recalled being scared after the suspected burglar pointed a gun at him, but Chris proceeded to stand his ground. In other words, he put a gun on an 11-year-old. When he was coming downstairs, he told me he was going to kill me and F you and all that, Chris told WVTM reporters. I told him I was going to kill him and that with the gun, if he didn't get out of the house, the homeschooled student said. Homeschoolers don't know anything. Ah, uh, let's go on with that. With a hamper in tow, the intruder attempted to flee the home and jump over the fence, but Chris already had him in his sights. I shot him through a hamper that he was carrying. And note here, how many times have you got people watching, how many movies have you seen where they, uh, they, they, they're holding like a hamper and someone shoots the hamper and they live? I was watching The Walking Dead. And uh, they were hi hiding behind a filing cabinet. A guy shot him with a rifle and he ducks behind a filing cabinet. Doesn't that drive you nuts when you see that? I mean, literally stupidity. Okay, so he shot him through the hamper. Hampers do not stop bullets, nor do filing cabinets. And the gun went into the back of his leg. And when all was said and done, Chris fired 12 shots at the man and the last bullet hitting him. So it wasn't that great of a shot. And he started crying like a little baby, the kid said. Chris suspects that the burglar didn't realize the gun was authentic until it was too late. When I pulled the gun out on him, I guess he didn't think it was a real gun because he just kept on walking, Chris said. The boy credited his stepfather. Yes, parents, it does not take a village to raise a damn child. The boy credited his stepfather with teaching him how to properly use a firearm. And he says he also plays zombies for target, target practice. <laughs> zombies at night behind filing cabinets. As if he had a message for the burglar Chris imparted, I hope you learned your lesson from coming to this house and trying to steal stuff. So, I mean, there goes Second Amendment keeping you alive and well here in our Second Amendment update. We are going to go on with it. Um... SHTFplan.com, Max Slavo. Packing heat, Missouri lawmakers expand the gun rights. Okay, concealed carry without permit. While so much of the propaganda about gun control has been inundating the country and clouding the debate about the Second Amendment in an effort to restrict firearms, the state of Missouri, who is going to make it missouri to be a criminal, just surprised everyone by actually expanding Banding gun rights. God bless them. The heavily Republican legislature just passed a bill in both the Senate and the House allowing people to carry concealed without needing a permit and without requiring training. Moreover, it reinforced the state's castle doctrine and the stand your ground statutes. This is from New York Times. Missouri lawmakers have passed a sweeping expansion of gun rights in the state, one that would allow where we just they hate they just rehashing. Under the measure, most people would be able to carry, excuse me, carry concealed guns, even if they have not completed the training currently required to obtain a permit. It also expands the state's castle doctrine. It's allowing invited guests, such as babysitters, to use deadly force against intruders. Well, good. If you're watching someone's child, you are responsible for their life. So good. It would also create a stand your ground right, meaning people would not have to retreat from danger in any place they are legally entitled to be present. And that is, of course, the law that worked in the favor of George Zimmerman, who simply defended himself. So this is very good news. Um, very, very good news. Do I like George Zimmerman? No, he's a jerk. 
Um, but he was right in that instance. Uh, he was still a jerk. This is Prison Planet, Kit Daniels. Anti-gun, Barbara Boxa. Hat tip to uh, um, Michael Savage. Boxa. My armed security saved me from Bernie voters. In other words, she is, and by, by she I mean this this creature that has been after your gun rights now for eons, is talking about having been saved by people with guns because her life matters, but your life does not matter. Okay, she started a new group. Your life doesn't matter. Um, this is uh, Kit Daniels, anti-gun senator Barbara Boxa said she was fortunate. She had armed security to save her from Bernie Sanders supporters. However, if you don't support Bernie Sanders and his peaceful supporters, like peaceful like Islam, if his peaceful supporters come for your head, you as a normal citizen do not deserve the same protections that Barbara Boxer gets. Because, you know, boxers' lives matter. Um... A boxer was at a Nevada State Democratic Party's 2016 state convention when Bernie voters disrupted the event on Saturday. They're very violent. People say Trump supporters are violent. Uh, no, the, the, the most of the violence that we've seen has come from Bernie supporters. It was a scary situation, Boxa told CNN on Wednesday. I was there. It was frightening. I had I was on the stage and people were six feet away from me. And if I didn't have a lot of security. I don't know what would have happened. In other words, she's bragging, it says, about her private security as she eradicates the Second Amendment rights of millions of Americans who can't afford that luxury. Boxa is in a very definition of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. How about that? I'm going to coin a new word for Barbara Boxer. Hypocrisy. Um, this isn't the first time she made such a stupid statement. Help me keep that on the internet, friends. Uh, hashtag um, hypocrisy. For example, it was only a day after a San Bernardino massacre the boxer claimed gun control works. It works. The fact is, sensible gun laws work, and we've proven that in California, she said. After two radicalized Muslims killed 14 people. Barbara Boxer, if the gun laws worked so well in California, then you wouldn't have been speaking at the biggest failure of gun laws in California history. She is an idiot. Um, I got some good news from the science front before we get into the dumdy dumdies here brought to you by uh, Sticker Junkie. Dead could be brought back to life in groundbreaking projects. It is nice to have some good news once in a while. Don't zone out. We've got two of the dumbiest dumbies ever coming up. But I thought this was worthy of note here. A, this is by Sarah Napton, uh, the science editor for telegraph.co.uk. A groundbreaking trial to see if it is impossible to regenerate the brains of dead people has run approval from health watchdogs. A lot of people are going to say this is evil. I don't think it's evil. If God didn't want you to do something, he wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, that, that doesn't mean that he likes sin, but he allows it. Um, there are certain things you cannot do. Because, you know, for instance, you can't jump off a building and fly without some artificial help. You, God doesn't want you to do it. You can't do it. Other times, he lets us discover things. He lets us discover things like um, uh, blood transfusions to save someone who's dying. Okay. Was it frowned upon in the Bible? Yeah, with good reason. Um, do you think shepherds that don't know anything about blood type should be trans doing blood transfusions? That's probably a bad idea. Later on, guess what? We've saved millions of lives with it. Um, we're taught to love life as followers of Christ. So I think this is good news. From all around. I know I'm going to get people saying that this is evil. I don't think it's evil. Indian specialist, Dr. Hima... Himanshu Bansal, as I butcher the poor person's name, working with biotech companies Ravita Life Sources and BioQuark Incorporated, has been granted ethical permission to recruit, recruit 20 patients who have been declared clinically dead from a traumatic brain injury to test whether parts of their central nervous system can be brought back to life. This is excellent, excellent news. Scientists will use a combination of therapies, which include injecting the brain with stem cells and a cocktail of 
peptides, as well as deploying lasers and nerve simulation techniques, which have shown to bring patients out of comas. The trial participants were have been certified dead and only kept alive through life support. They will be monitored for several months using brain imaging equipment to look for signs of regeneration, particularly in the upper spinal cord, the lowest region of the brain stem which controls independent breathing and heartbeat. The team believes the brain stems will be able to erase their history and restart life again. Um, it represents, according to uh, Dr. Ira Pastor, the first trial of its kind and another step toward the eventual reversal of death, which could happen in our lifetime. And they have ethical permission here. This isn't something they're doing like a bunch of Nazis. Um, I'm happy about it. I really am. It says, um, the team believes the um, brains, again, will completely rejuvenate. They received approval from their first 20 subjects, and we hope to start recruiting patients immediately from the first site. We are working with the hospital now to identify families where there may be a religious or medical barrier. So they're not trampling on anybody's morals to do this. But it says the first stage, named first in human neuro recognition and neuro reanimation, will be non randomized, single group proof of concept, and will take place at the Alpam Hospital in Rudrapur in uh, Uttarakhand, India, as I butcher the Indian language, and is being led by Dr. Himanashu Bensal of Revita Life Surface. They've offered the same protocol to a couple of brain dead subjects. And, in Europe. So it says a person is confirmed as being brain dead when their brainstem function is permanently lost. Well, I just had a really good friend to whom that happened. to, And I, I just attended a funeral and it was miserable. I was very unhappy. And this kind of thing could have saved her life. Um, she was driving and she was eight and a half, nine months pregnant. I don't know wet left of center, wasn't drinking, we don't know what happened, but wet left of center and uh, was brain dead. Her baby um, screwed up its leg and broke it in a couple places. And um, well, I guess look up Brer in, in Akron if you wish to donate and help her. It's not a secret. I mean, she didn't do anything wrong. She wasn't drunk. Poor girl died. She's a friend of mine. Well, this kind of technology is the kind of thing that could have that poor little baby with a uh, with a mother. It's the kind of thing that could um, could have kept her with those who loved her, including her really awesome uh, fiance, who I unfortunately uh, met. I don't mean unfortunately met, but meeting at a funeral for his uh, girl is not exactly the way you want to meet. My point is, um, this kind of thing is good. It could save a lot of people and help a lot of people. I've got viewers popping in all over the place. Do me a favor. Don't leave. No, no, no. Because now is the time for the dumb day of the day. Oh, yes. We got our dumb day music playing and we have our dumb knees on the way. So awesome. Oh, song. I'm just going to let it play through as I turn it on. We're going to let it play through as we do our dumb knees. Here we got two of them. This is from Louder with Crowder. Got to be the best conservative web, web, website, I think. Uh, it's Stephen Crowder is the best conservative writer we have today. For those of you that don't know what a vegan is, they're uh, non-meat eaters who uh, live off of almost nothing and tell you how healthy they are. Now, I'm not laughing that somebody died, but at some point, uh, Darwinism uh, does have points that need to be looked at. Uh, evolution might have been wrong, but the rest of it, he might have been on all vegans are passionate to the nth degree. Still, they come in different breeds. There are vegan bloggers who spend every effort to spread the gospel of eating non-meat gray matter. There's also vegan people. They're caught between a rock and a hard place. They want to be regular humans who do things. But doing things takes nutrition and energy, both of which are in short supply via the vegan way. Speaking of that rock and a hard place of veganism, this woman got her, there's a link here, got herself uh, quite stuck on the huge rock, Everest. 
a hard place to be anyway, but probably harder when you're malnourished herbivore. She did. So did she conquer that mountain by my screen's messing up? Did she conquer that mountain by deriving her protein from nuts and seeds? No, she died. An Australian woman who set off the climb Mount Everest to prove that vegans can do anything died Saturday after developing altitude sickness. Maria Striden, 34, had reached the final camp where the summit was before she and her husband, both vegan, began suffering from high-altitude pulmonary edema, which caused fluids to build up in uh, Simon's brain. Stridelmo had sought out to prove that she could scale the mountain while on a vegan diet. It seems that the couple have a warped idea of vegans being malnourished and weak, Stridelmo said. By climbing the seven summons, we want to prove that vegans can do anything and more. That happened. Those were her last words because she died. It's one thing to be an animal rights activist and practice what you preach. Being a wimpy PETA advocate is your prerogative. But there's a hard truth learned by this moron above. You're a whip. I mean that in the most physical senses. You are a whip. You might be a noble wimp, you might be a wimp with high expectations or lofty causes, but you're a wimp nonetheless. Fit meat eaters have died scaling Mount Everest, so you, a wimp with a terrible diet, don't try to scale a 30,000 foot mountain after a breakfast, lunch, and dinner of tofu because you will die. I love the way Stephen Crowder writes. I, I've got to read more because he's such a perfect writer. Then a bunch of swarmy meat eaters will write about how horrible vegan diets are. Ahem. Hubris killed this woman. She sat on her noble high horse, and I don't eat animals, therefore I'm better than people who eat animals, and I'm going to scale Mount Everest to prove it. And then, as you all see, neener, neener. That high horse done bucked her off. Are all vegans stupid? No, well, not yet. But depriving your body of necessary proteins will get you there. I'm telling you, friends, that is some of the best writing I've ever seen. And that brings us to the last of the two dumbies. For those of you that don't know, I do the Dumb's Cap of the Month every month. It'll be coming up within the next day or so, along with your massive Fukushima update. PJ Dub hammering out the truth here um, on Prison Planet MIT is Islamophobia accelerating global warming? No, this is not the onion. Um, the satirical website. Friends, we know that man is not warming the planet. This has been proven time and time again. Climate gate, Lord Moncton, uh, even NASA's own data shows no warming in the last 17 years. However, this takes the whole stupidity even higher. Um, not wanting to be blown up by someone who hasn't been vetted, first of all, does not make you Islamophobic. It makes you intelligent. Second of all, there is no intelligence to be found in this analogy, which is why it wins the dumpty of the day. Massachusetts Institute of Technology hosted an event last night, which speaker Ghassan Hajj argued that Islamophobia was responsible for the acceleration of global warming, which has actually decelerated, if you look facts. This lecture took place at MIT, the world's most scientific research establishment, on Monday at 5 p.m. Seriously, from George Eager. According to the description in the event, the talk examined the relation between Islamophobia, that is not wanting to be blown up or beheaded, as the dominant form of racism today and the ecological crisis of which there is in terms of man warming the planet. Perhaps, Hedge, you didn't get the memo that Islam is a belief system, not a race. That is true. You are not racist if you don't like Islam. There is no Islamic race. According to Hajj, Islamophobia and global warming are connected because they both originate in colonial forms of capitalist accumulation. Hedge also, in a book coming out soon to be titled, Are Racists Responsible for Global Warming? An idiot. And that will sell like two copies to like his friends. First of all, colonialism has nothing to do with global warming either. Just ask China. Um, theologian George Eager summed up the ludicrousness of the issue best when he tweeted, this lecture took place at IMD, which is supposed to be the world's forensic science research establishment. 
Yet it is another example of the regressive left's obsession with intersectionality. In other words, everything that they claim is a form of oppression, which in the world of the perpetually offended, grievous junkies is literally everything, is tied then to everything else. However, it is by no means the first time that the mythical boogeyman of Islamophobia has been blamed for real-world issues. Robert Spencer highlighted back in February, Time Magazine featured Harun Maghul, which argued that Islamophobia was also the cause of crumbling infrastructure. That's right. You're Islamophobic if you don't want blown up. Let me tell you what. You're also losing money if you're calling Uber instead of train transportation. Look up trains transportation. You're going to save money. And when you let them know you heard about it from the correct views, you're going to save even more money. Guys, signing out. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless. And please donate if you can. Hit subscribe. Hit share.